what's going on guys i wanted to start a new weekly series where we just kind of follow how the canadians and the nba did that week uh, i'm hoping to highlight some of the guys that maybe don't get talked about a whole lot unfortunately for this week the guys that we talk about a lot just did really well so they're going to be featured heavily in this week but hopefully next week we're going to get some key contributions from guys that maybe you don't even think of as even being canadian that don't get the spotlight that much but yeah so i want to start with how Nikhil alexander walker did in the last seven days he averaged 19 points five rebounds and two and a half assists over the last week uh, these numbers are kind of pumped up because of the 37 and 8 game that he had against the Clippers in a close loss. But he's getting extended run right now because of Lonzo Ball's absence. And I think he's a guy that could really fit the genetic makeup of this team. A secondary ball handler who can get his own shot off will definitely help um, come playoff times if the Pelicans make it that far. But yeah, he can carve himself out a nice little role in New Orleans. If he just keeps getting the runtime, if he keeps believing in a shot, I mean, he's always going to shoot it. If you ever watch Nikhil Alexander Walker play, he's, he's going to shoot it. But, you know, so long as he can just stay the course of an NBA season, be a little bit more efficient, I think Nikhil Alexander Walker is going to continue to have really good success in the league. Um, outside of that game, he had a 12.3 rebound to assist game in 20 minutes versus the Lakers. And then he got 33 minutes against the Kings where he put up nine, five and five, which, you know, nine, five and five for a role player is still good stats. Right. So I think Nikhil Alexander Walker, he's trending in the right direction and he's someone I'd look out for in the future. Of course, any Canadian basketball content, we'll talk about Jamal Murray. Uh, Jamal Murray had I guess a typical week by his standards, he was averaging 22 points, four and a half rebounds, four and a half assists for the week. He had a really good game in 42 minutes against the Jazz. However, it came in a loss, but he had 30 points, four rebounds, five assists. Uh, But nevertheless, still a good week considering who he is. I think he's going to have much better weeks in the future, and we'll probably dive into that a little bit more when those come. But for Jamal Murray, kind of the -the run-of-the-mill week for him. SGA, Shea Gilgis Alexander had a great week. He is averaging 23 and a half, five and a half, and four and a half for the week. Um, he had a really good game against the Bulls, where basically Team Canada defeated the Bulls last week. Uh, Shea had 33, five and 10. And sleeper, most improved pick, Lou Dortz, uh, had a 21 and eight game. And those two guys combined, they they really showed out against uh, the Chicago Bulls. And for Lou Dortz, he's averaging 14, five over the, 14 and 5 over the last week, and he's continuing to show uh, the OKC Thunder that he deserves a spot in the league and that he has staying power. And if he can continue to defend and trust in that three-point shot, he's going he's gonna to have a, a, a job in the NBA for a long time. So those are, two, some, those are two OKC players that had a really good week. Canadian is Maple Mamba. Over at the New York Knicks, R.J. Barrett, he had 17 and a half and seven boards and three and a half assists on the sixth place Knicks. This far into the season, the Knicks are still in a playoff position. And you know what? They have a great defense, so maybe he'll stick around. But yeah, R.J., he's doing his thing right now. He had a couple good rebounding games, a couple good scoring games. He is getting a ton of minutes from Tom Thibodeau. And he is a high draft pick, so there's expectations there. But it looks like he's coming around. He's to to put the ball in the hoop and not take too, too many shots to do it. He's going to have a really great NBA career. And I think he might be on the verge of a breakout, perhaps even this week. Dylan Brooks is another Canadian guy that I don't think gets enough credit uh, for his contributions on the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Last week, he had a 21, seven and three game against the Cavs. And for the second year in a row, he's averaging 16 points, four rebounds and three assists. So, Uh, Dylan Brooks, he's really balling out right now in Memphis. And I think he solidified his position in the league. I think he's going to be in the league for a long, long time. Anyone putting up those kind of numbers, he's going to be in the league. Um, The efficiency numbers aren't terribly great. But again, if you're averaging 16, 4, and 3, you're an NBA player through and through and through. Um, So there's... So the video is half uploaded on YouTube right now. And I just remembered, I forgot to talk about how dominant Chris Boucher has been over the last week and really the whole season. He's really, really showed out. Chris Boucher last week averaged 21 points, nine rebounds, and a half assists, along with two and a half blocks. 
uh, actually a little bit more than that. So, you know, Chris Boucher for the Toronto Raptors has really sparked the 3-0 and turnaround last week where the Raptors are still not looking too good this season, but Chris Boucher has absolutely showed out. Uh, he's proving that he's worth the contract that he got this summer, maybe playing uh, above his contract value. Um, but yeah, other than that, Chris Boucher is having a really great season. Overall, he's averaging 16 points with seven rebounds and assists, two and a half blocks, and 60% from the field and 47% from three. He's hooping. It was a long ride for Chris Boucher to get to this point, but he's really showing out. He's, he's a starting caliber center for the Raptors, but of course they're going to start a big body over there or Pascal Siakam. For whatever reason, uh, Nick Nurse likes it when Chris Boucher just beats up on other bench players. I don't think he cares right now. He's hooping. Shout outs to Chris Boucher. Uh, but there is a Canadian right, that I'm worried about right now in the league, and that's Corey Joseph. Corey Joseph averaged three points, one and a half rebounds, one and a half assists, and about 15 minutes a game over the last week. And his efficiency numbers have just tanked. He's not shooting the ball well. He's shooting 40% from the field this season and 26% from three, which for Corey Joseph isn't going to get it done. Um, I'm a huge Corey Joe fan. You know, I, I watched, I liked watching him in San Antonio. Um, I think he had a good Raptors career. Um, but right now he's on a team, uh, the Sacramento Kings, that have a lot of good guards. You know, the emergence of Tyrese Halliburton, um, De'Aaron Fox, and Buddy Heald. He's He's fourth right now in that rotation. And with the numbers he's averaging and the not so great number uh, percentages that he's shooting, it's not, it's not out of the question that he gets lost in the shuffle there and perhaps is looking for a new team next season. But yeah, I'm just concerned that Corey Joseph may not may not pan out over there in Sacramento and that he might be uh, seeing the writing on the walls, which is never good. You want to see as many Canadians in the NBA as possible, but you know, they were one and three over the last week. They had a 38 point loss to the Clippers. They, um, there's a game where the, the Sacramento Kings only lost by five, but he was a minus 23 in that game. And I know plus minus isn't everything, but that's a, that's a bad look right now. Uh, yeah, so minus 55 in the last four games. And for the season, he's averaging six, two, and two, which is, you know, at that point, you might want to invest in one of the, the rookies coming up in next year's draft, which is supposed to be a very, very deep draft. And Sacramento's five and nine, 13th in the West. I don't see them sneaking into a playoff position, although there's tons of time left, and they've been a very fun team to watch over the over the course of the season, but yeah, with a five nine record, thirteenth in the West, it's likely that they're going to be another lottery team in a super deep draft with a lot of guards. So while I hope that Corey Joseph stays in the league, there's definitely a lot of a lot of indicators that his time, um, at least in the Sacramento Kings, might be coming to an end. He signed a twelve point six million per year contract in twenty nineteen, that is partially guaranteed for the twenty twenty one twenty two season. So it'll be tricky in terms of money. But again, if a guy like Marvin Bagley looks to move on and they get a good player in return for Marvin Bagley, Corey Joseph's salary might be the filler in a deal. So uh, so keep your eye on Corey Joseph. I don't know how it's going to pan out for him, but right now it's not looking too good. And of course, shout out to the Halton boys, Fionn Newcabangeli and Ignis Presdakis for, for touching the court this week and getting some run in. Um, again, Fionn, you got a Burlington, Ignis out of Oakville. So you love to see when uh, guys from your neighborhood are doing well in the NBA and getting a chance to play. And that's pretty much it for this week when it comes to the round for Canadian players in the NBA. Um, I have a podcast where I interview Canadians uh, along the different areas of basketball. Um, my last podcast on YouTube is with a prep school coach. So if you're in that age bracket wondering what it takes to go prep, definitely go check that out. If not, still a really interesting listen. And then 
uh, next week, or actually this week, I'll be dropping the Caleb Agata podcast, where it was just a lot of fun, and he is a top scorer right now, the number two scorer of Canadians playing internationally. So he's a walking bucket over there in Israel right now. We had a really good conversation. He gives a lot of good tips on what it takes to to play at the next level. So definitely check that out. And yeah, uh, I'll be continuing to have guys in the podcast that kind of made their way through the Canadian ranks and played pro somewhere. So, so yeah, this Canadians around the league segment as well. I'll see you guys next week. See ya. Peace.